Greetings everybody, Dr. Frank here with a brief training video. Uh, now that we have a uh, EMS training captain, the goal is to have a, a monthly training video such as this for updates and, and so forth. So um, welcome to this month's training video. And what this month's training video has to do with is cervical spine immobilization. Uh, as you all know, we went from using long spine boards and completely immobilizing the patients a couple of years ago to just utilizing cervical collars. And my concern right now is that our pendulum has sort of swung from immobilizing everybody and backboarding them and packaging them up completely to not really using any spinal immobilization. Um, so I want to bring it back into the middle. I want to bring the pendulum back into the middle and, and, and remind everybody to please use cervical collars on tra trauma patients. And remember, we can clear the spine in the field. Uh, protocol 1.6 uh, is spinal motion restriction protocol. Um, please review that. But just remember the first step in the spinal motion restriction protocol is whether the patient has a significant mechani mechanism of injury. And if you see, uh, the, me the significant mechanisms include uh, ejection of a, of a passenger, high-speed crashes, so on 75 or, or, or highway-speed crashes, uh, falls greater than 12 feet, um, your discretion, um, and then age is also a consideration, whether the patient's older than 55 or less than five years old. Uh, so what, what I'm seeing anecdotally in the emergency department is, is a lot of patients are being brought in uh, with a significant mechanism of injury. You know, a uh, uh, motor vehicle crash on 75, there's a rollover, uh, this person sh should be immobilized. Um, you know, so just use your discretion, but just remember the first step to this protocol is uh, whether the patient has a significant mechanism of injury. All right. Holy crap, Johnson, come here. Did you see this mechanism of injury? Why isn't she C-spined yet? I want those batteries cut, and I want C-spines here now. Uh, and then moving on, the next is whether they have an alteration of consciousness, whether they have focal neurologic deficits, so focal weakness or something like this, um, and then anatomic deformity of the spine or midline spinal tenderness. And another important point is that this does not include whether the patient has pain in his or her neck um, or back. This is touching the patient, midline cervical tenderness, step-offs, abnormalities. So we have to touch the patient and determine whether he, he or she has midline cervical tenderness. Uh, so when in doubt, just put a cervical collar on the patient. You know, I, would, I wouldn't uh, second guess you for one second. If you called a trauma alert on a patient that has like a non-penetrating trauma, that has a blunt trauma, put a cervical collar on them. Uh, you're never gonna go wrong. Um, you know, uh, not putting a collar on somebody who has a spinal injury, uh, that's certainly, uh, you know, setting yourself up. Uh, for failure and, and for, for trouble down the road. So, so just put a cervical collar on these, tr on these blunt trauma patients. Um, and remember, you th consider the mechanism and touch the patient. Do they have midline cervical tenderness? And finally, do they have a distracting injury, right? So somebody who gets hit by a car and you're concerned that they have a femur fracture, that person needs to have a cervical collar. Somebody who gets hit by a car and you're concerned that their arm is broken, that person needs to have a, cerv a cervical collar. You cannot clear their spine. That's considering that's, that's a consideration of a distracting injury. So, you know, let's swing the pendulum back into the middle. Let's use the cervical collars more. You know, now that we took away the long board, it should be much easier. You just throw the collar on the patient. And then after you put the collar on the patient, you, uh, you can see in the protocol on the right side, have them lay flat on the stretcher. Um, if you want to put the head of the bed up a little bit, that's fine if that makes them more comfortable. Uh, but have them lay flat, strap them to the stretcher, have them hold their neck still. So uh, that's just um, a brief reminder of utilization of the spinal, um, uh, uh, proto spinal clearance protocol. And please use the cervical collar more. Um, and thank you very much.